and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. Hello Facebook, uh, Ray Dramas from XY Advisor here. Really proud to be uh, doing this week's XY Live with my co-host Phil Thompson uh, and our guest Joel Robbie of Nod, uh, who's doing some really wonderful things. Uh, the formalities, uh, big thank you to AIA who allow us to continue to do this every week. Big, big thank you to you guys. Um, it is a big day for XY Advisor as well. We're doing our first interstate event tonight in uh, uh, in Brisbane. Who I'm sure if you're part of the Facebook group, you would have seen a whole bunch of um, advertising and bits and pieces about that, some brilliant content. And uh, uh, Brizzy seems to be one of those hubs that are really kicking off uh, in the country. So um, we'll uh, definitely be making an effort to, to be doing heaps more for you guys up, up north. Um, and we'll be avoiding the state of origin just to keep ourselves uh, safe from, from that as well. Um, and also just a little reminder, Mastermind is a, um, a, an initiative that we kicked off. And we've got uh, over 20 groups around the country. This week, groups of around half a dozen advisors are getting together uh, physically all around the country from Perth and Darwin, Sydney, Wollongong, all around the country. Um, we do have uh, it advertised again on our on Facebook and on our website. So please, if you're, um, especially if you're in a regional area, please uh, do nominate your interest to join and we'll do our best to get you in a, in a group of like-minded advisors. Um, with that, I will introduce Joel Robbie, who uh, started at, at university doing uh, psychology, as, as I'm currently doing. So um, I can certainly resonate with uh, how messed up being introspective can get you. <laughs> <laughs> um, from there, he did actually do a short stint as a coaching assistant at the Swans, which is really cool. Uh, and then uh, seemed to spend most of his professional career at Telstra, finishing up as an account executive before crossing over to Finn Services and being the CEO of Nod. Um, so thank you very much, Joel, for, for taking the time today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, yeah, really appreciate it, mate. And um, I personally have you know, sort of watched you since we met uh, you know, a few, few months back now. Um, I'm really interested in Nod, but for those that perhaps haven't heard of what Nod is, um, if you'd like to give a bit of a description, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely can. Um, so, so Nod is a platform allowing people to get advice about money from a financial expert on demand. So, um, you know, we think of it like a, you know, like an Uber or an, or an Airbnb for, for financial advice. Um, we're venture backed. So we're going through um, a accelerator program here in Sydney uh, where a venture capital firm called H2 Adventures, H2 Ventures has put a bit of money into our, into our company to get us started. Uh, and we work out of the Stone and Chalk FinTech Hub uh, in Sydney. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's a really kind of quick snapshot of, of who we are and where we're up to. Um, one of the questions, I was sort of, you know, in preparation for this, trolling through your LinkedIn page, so you'll get a view of that. Mm. <laughs> um, that's cool. What, what makes someone who's doing account management in, uh, in Telstra come across to, to Fin Services and go, you know what, I am uh, breaking the trend and, and kicking something off? Yeah, it's a fair question. Um, so our, our story, like a lot of good startup stories, um, um, kind of begins from a, a personal place. So uh, back in 2010, um, my father was, was pretty sick. He got diagnosed with cancer and my family was, had, um, you know, three years, before, about three years before that, um, bought a restaurant to try to replace his income. Um, you, know, you know, it was, it was a pretty bad diagnosis. So um, to cut a really long and, and traumatic story short, that was a pretty bad decision um, financially and, and just stress-wise on the family. Um, and I watched every day as my mum and dad, who weren't particularly financially savvy or business savvy, just struggle with everyday financial decisions. Um, and there was no really easy way for them to get answers to those. Um, you know, they could book appointments, they can go and, you know, spend, you know, four, five, six weeks waiting for answers to things, but there was no just kind of snappy way for them to get answers about really important questions that they were trying to answer on the fly. So that was kind of the genesis for Nod. So Nod was a, a bit of a reaction to that, had a bit of a look around, worked out that actually this wasn't a problem that was only experienced by my family. It was actually experienced by most families out there at various stages in their lives. And um, yeah, it was a, 
I thought there'd be a better way um, to try to solve that problem by pulling together a bunch of advisors, providing some some enabling technology to allow um, you know in the moment advice to kind of happen and and then see how we go. So that that was the genesis for Nod. I think it's kind of an interesting. Um... Uh, point you make there where you know it's only 20% of Australians are getting advice and you know our business model like uh, well everyone's business model really is is built around ongoing service so it's 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 there's an initial upfront fee which is the, the preparation work basically to set the, the, the groundwork to to your ongoing relationship and then it's a monthly fee thereafter it's really not been about answering short snappy answers you're really trying to get that ongoing ongoing service yeah no, it's, 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 and that's, that's totally fair as well. I think, um, and I, I, I suppose there's a couple of problems we're trying to solve around, around Nod to, to try to address that 80-20%, 80-20% split. Um, so, you know, I see you know, people like my mum and dad would never have gone and, and seen a financial advisor and, and spent, you know, especially just that initial setup, they would, just wouldn't have spent the money. Um, but they would absolutely have loved to spend $100, $200, $300 here or there to try to get answers to those burning questions that were, that were burning them up at night and try to just ease that stress. So um, I suppose we saw Nod as a bit of a, maybe a, an easier entry point for, for the 80% to try to, you know, get them into getting advice and then moving on from there. It, it's kind of interesting. My, my, my girlfriend actually is a, is a great example of that where she, she had a, you know, a couple of grand saved in the bank and was keen on, you know, investing it because she was a bit you know, frustrated with earning nothing in, in interest went to, to see a financial advisor just for, you know, the sorts of things that you might be able to, uh, a platform like that might be able to ser- service, um, but instead came back with a quote for an SOA that was about 50% of the funds that you had to invest. You know, that's, that's they stay in the 80%. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, you, you, your girlfriend in that situation obviously probably wouldn't bother with it, right? So um, it just doesn't make, make, make so much sense. So, um, yeah, we're trying to open up. Um, the world of financial advice to more people. Um, we're trying to democratize it, I suppose you would say. And um, yeah, we think it's a worthy goal. What, uh, what type of questions are being asked on, on your platform? So we get all types. Um, so we get questions about uh, investing money. Um, we get questions about buying a house. We get questions about, um, you know, from small business owners, uh, what should I, you know, um, decisions around kind of tax and that sort of stuff around small businesses. Uh, we get uh, questions around super, uh, just the family budget. Yeah, it's it's a pretty even kind of mix, to be honest. And lots of different what's, topics. What's the? I mean, for those of that have never heard of Nod, and like we, you know, we're talking about answering short, snappy, short, short, snappy uh, answers to to questions. What's what's the user experience? What happens? What's the journey? Sure. Um, so user comes on, uh, they go to our website, they sign up for an account, with, usually with Facebook. Um, they then uh, ask a question either in their own words or we've actually now done a kind of pre-filled list of of questions that you can answer because it just makes it easier for people to get started. Um, Then if required, uh, we'll do a a fact find. So we use financial data aggregation technology to basically pull a dashboard of the user's financials together for um, for the, to flip around and show to the advisor um, kind of on demand in a few minutes and uh, the advisor that can then provide the advice um, either by uploading an SOA or by um, if it's just general advice, they can just type text into a box. And then we also handle um, once that advice is given back, uh, the user pays on platform and we handle all the payments for the, for the advisor as well. Um, Nod's business model is that we take 20% of all the advice fees and we kind of manage all that split uh, on the advisor's behalf and send the money across. And so I've, I've got one question about, um, I've signed up for Nod and how come I'm only in position 36 now? <laughs> so <laughs> so one, 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 of the, um, one of the hard things, I suppose, or harder things about running a platform business where you've got effectively two sides of a marketplace is that you need to um, obviously balance supply and demand. So we don't want to have advisors on the platform just kind of sitting there waiting around, not seeing anything happen. Uh, We want to make sure that as as soon as you've joined the platform and you're active and you're live, that that you're getting, you know, you're effectively getting a question to, to answer and some business thrown your way. So that's the reason for that. 
Yeah, and you and you and you don't want a, an advisor like me. Is that is that the <laughs> that's also the the signal I'm getting? Um, no, no, but but seriously, you're you're waiting for the demand side to kind of. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So so we're 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 always, we're always balancing those two things to make sure that there's enough uh, users for to advisors to service and there's enough advisors to to make sure we we can fill the demand that we've got. So. And yeah. with the supply demand thing, does a does an advisor that ranks in their thirties, forties, or fifties do they do they have to charge a lower amount than one, two, three? How does that how does that kind of work? No, so I suppose um, the platform the platform is continually evolving in terms of how we run um, both the user experience and the pricing side of things. Um, so at the moment, there's kind of um, it's it's a bit of a fixed fee structure, but um, we're going to be moving to a model. Uh, very very soon whereby advisors will basically just set their own fees so you set your own fee um, your own hourly rate or your own fee for particular types of questions whatever whatever that might be um, so that's that's how it'll work in in, in the very near future uh, the other thing will be we're about to enable um, basically for a user to book a face-to-face -face appointment with an advisor as well so we got a lot of feedback one of the fun things about running a, a tech startup is that you tend to do a lot of just user testing and to getting fast feedback and iterating on stuff. And one of the bits of feedback we have was that actually I wouldn't mind going and seeing my advisor face to face. Um, so we're about to enable that feature as well. Um, and then your normal um, kind of uh, pricing structures would, would, would take hold and we would basically then just be seeking a 20% referral fee. Yeah, so I just had a question just to step back just about that process. Um, mm. You said uh, the client pays after the advice is given um, and, you, and you also said that there's the ability for the SOA. So from an advisor's point of view, um, why would I you know, complete a full statement of advice for a client who hasn't committed to pay me a fee? Is that, is that the current scenario? Did I get that right? Uh, so the way, the way it works is that the the client's credit card gets charged once the uh, they've accepted the advice or the advice is delivered. Um, and that's just, you know, we're dealing with an online, you know, in any online kind of trust based service, um, there's, a, there's a bit of a, a barrier there for people, you know, giving money up for stuff that hasn't come back, especially something that's, you know, it can be pretty intangible, like, like advice mm. can be before you've actually received it. It's kind of hard to work out what you're getting. Um, so that was an important piece of feedback we got on the consumer side to say, look, we need to make sure that I'm not getting charged until something's actually being delivered to me. That said, we do actually hold the customer's credit cards on file uh, before the uh, agreement's made to provide the advice. So if there is a situation where we see that the client's got the file, they've read it, we know, we know we can see what they're looking at. Um, and there's, you know, they ha just haven't clicked the accept advice button, then we'll manage that situation accordingly. So yeah, yeah. The, 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 idea, the idea is that trust is developed on both sides. Yeah, so it's not a matter of I'll go ahead and do all this work. If they don't love the, the advice, then they can no. just opt out of pay. No. Yeah, okay. No. Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. You can kind of see how that would, that would make sense. You know, uh, it's, it's a funny one. It's kind of, it's kind of getting paid for leads <laughs> or you could, you could see how that works for advisors, right? Because you, you, you definitely see someone calling it an office like ours saying, Hey, you know, I've got a bit of a deposit saved. i uh, keen on getting a home. What do you reckon? Um, and, and that sort of spits back to, to needing to do an SOA. But if it's just preliminary questions, and I'm answering under a general advice, which I imagine a lot of people are doing, where it's like, you know, these are the sorts of things that you should be considering. Yeah. Um, you know, you're basically creating a framework for someone to come in to talk to you at a one-to-one at -to -one level. Are you sort of seeing that? Absolutely, yeah. That's 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 the majority of what we see. Um, and yes, we absolutely... So we, I mean, I think there's, there's exciting things on, on both sides of the marketplace here. So the first, for advisors, it's a way to... Um, engage new clients in a pretty frictionless way and probably clients that you may not have engaged with uh, traditionally just because they're, they're people who are looking to engage in a, in a um, maybe a more transactional way initially just to get some answers to some kind of basic questions. Um, but then there's also the, obviously the potential to turn those into real kind of uh, paying clients uh, in, the f in, the, in the future via a referral system. And on the consumer side, all of a sudden they've got access to a pool of uh, expertise that they wouldn't have had access to in the past because it would have been really hard for an advisor group or an yeah. advisor to serve, serve this style of client in the past um, just because 
it, it wasn't quite so efficient. But with a platform like Nod, it becomes efficient to do so pretty easily. Um, yeah, all that, that whole process end-to-end -end is taken care of for both sides. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just want to kind of um, dive a bit more into the, the fees side of things. So we've got some questions from um, Benjamin Marsh and on Facebook Live. You said, um, like, how are you dealing with debt collecting? And, like, uh, if I guess it's more around once you have the credit card on file, if you get a decline after the advice is provided, what's the kind of process and around that? Yeah, so we know um, before before an, uh, an engagement is accepted, we know whether the, the card is basically good or a good card or a bad card. Um, mm. So we know, we know that up front. So before uh, an advisor is connected with a consumer, we know whether the, the card um, has enough available funds to pay for the advice. Uh, that's point number one. Um, and the point number two, we, we haven't had a situation yet where we've had to collect a, go, go debt collecting. I've got to say, it's, yeah. um, we've, we've tried to design the process and kind of where we take the credit card and all those sorts of steps in a way that um, we don't really have to go chasing people. It's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty intuitive on both sides and um, both sides are protected. So. And, and just to follow on from that, just about, and can we have an ongoing advice client relationship um, through your platform? Is that, or is it just built on the once off? If you want ongoing service, contact the advisor separately and, and. No, absolutely. So um, we have had lots of feedback from, from both sides that they would, that, that what they would like to have the ability to go and set up an ongoing relationship, go and see the advisor face to face and, and, and get deeper after that initial engagement. So our, our vision is that we will absolutely allow um, and through our platform enable people to book appointments with advisors and go and see them. And then well, we would basically take a referral fee for, for passing that across. So um, absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all for people getting, getting advice in whatever way they, they see is it see fit and whatever way they want to receive the advice. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really keen on, um, and I didn't didn't uh, ask this question previously, so I'm not sure if you've got the data around the demographics of, of clients using this stuff. You sort of yeah. made 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 uh, made comment earlier that you know these are perhaps people that wouldn't traditionally go go directly to an advisor. So I'm just keen, you know, like, and the reason why I ask is if I'm a young advisor and I've got a target market of clients that are tricky to get my hands on, is you know does not does not is is not a way of doing that. So who, who's who's kind of using this stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it tends to be a younger demographic. Um, and part of that's our targeting. We've, we've kind of purposely gone after a, a slightly younger demographic of, you know, 20, 29 to 40 kind of year olds. Okay. Um, maybe you've got a, one or two kids, um, generally uh, professional time poor, um, living, living in the city kind of urban areas. So that's, that's, that's kind of our profile, uh, both men and women. Uh, we've got a really even split of gender. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it tends to be that style of that style of client. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Clayton Daniel, um, asked what, 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 it, what does client success look like? So have you guys sort of mapped out what you'd ideally have, have, you know, as a client journey or, or what, what I uh, sort of articulated that, I guess. Yeah. So um, for, for us, it's, it's about clients getting um, advice as so good advice as quickly as, as humanly possible. Um, and hopefully they end up setting up a, a, a nice uh, ongoing relationship with whatever advisor they've, they've connected with on Nod. Um, we've built a rating system into the platform. So whenever okay. a client gets, um, gets some advice on Nod, they rate the, 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 uh, the quality of the advice out of five stars. Um, happy to say we've only ever had five star ratings on the platform, so that's a good start. Um, but that's that's how we that's how we look at it. So it's about um, speed of the advice, um, quality of the advice, both in terms of verbatims and ratings, um, and also we we tend to look at um, uh, referrals. So um, clients have the ability to um, refer their friends, kind of to nod after the fact of getting some advice. Um, so we like to see that word of mouth happening for the platform as well. That's, that's kind of some of the metrics we track. Do you, is there, is it just financial advice? Uh, cause I imagine a lot of this stuff, you know, Australia, it'd be remiss of me not to recognize Australians have a love obsession with property. Um, so I imagine a yeah. lot of this stuff is around that, that transaction. Definitely. So it's about 20% of the questions we get are around buying a house. Um, so we have just to that point, we have mortgage brokers uh, on the platform. 
Uh, we also have accountants on the platform. Um, so it's not just financial advisors. There are, it's, it, we call them financial experts. So it's, cool. a, it's a bit broader than just financial advice. Yeah. Yeah, I get, just from a... I, I don't want to get too deep into the, the licensing space and, you know, and, and all of that, but I mean, just a few things that come to my mind. So um, payments, if you're uh, an advisor, you're licensed through a larger licensee, uh, all revenue needs to go through that licensee. How is, mm -hmm. I guess, how's that managed through the platform? Sure. So um, we, um, so the way that works is, is we, we make the transaction with the client. 20% uh, of that fee goes to Nod, 80% of the fee goes directly into whatever bank account um, the advisor nominates with us. Okay. So if that needs to be the licensee's account, if that's uh, a company account, um, we're, we're not fussed, um, but we're happy to set that up in a way that suits suits the advisor. Yeah, that makes sense. That's pretty easy. Um, and then just, just a question, I guess this is probably the, the biggest burning question, is when you're providing answers, where does where's the line between general and personal? And um, Yeah. That's a big concern for advisors. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, um, I suppose the, the short answer to that is the same rules apply in the digital world as, as, as apply in the, in the face to face physical world. So um, if, you're, if you're dealing with someone's personal situation, if you've got information on where they're sitting, if their financial situation, all that sort of stuff, if the question they've asked is structured in such a way that it, it, it pertains to personal advice, then you need to follow those same compliance rules as you would in the physical world. Um, we have an ability for a client to be able to opt in to general advice. So they'll actually select, okay. um, select general advice and say, I want advice, uh, kind of generally on this topic as opposed to anything pertaining to my situation. So that's an opt in thing. And that's clearly marked when you get your, um, get your job from Nod as well. So you'll know when, when that's been selected. Um, so those, those are some of those things. Um, I'll also, um, just kind of drop a, a new a new thing we're bringing uh, to market as well. So we're about to put in place uh, a bit of an umbrella insurance scheme around Nod as well. So um, so I don't know if you've ever seen the insurance schemes that um, Uber, Airbnb and Airtasker have got in place, um, but basically they're protecting both sides of the market. So I don't know what um, it is, but I know if a cleaner steals my stuff, I get a thousand bucks back. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> kind of similar. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of similar. So we'll, we'll have our own kind of PI insurance that will cover um, uh, advisors and we'll, we'll also cover uh, consumers as well. So kind of excited about how, that, um, how that's going to play out. Um, initially, it was kind of de designed as a trusting on the consumer side. So to help con consumers break down some of those walls to just getting, getting in and booking appointments. Um, but um, there's probably some benefit there for advisors as well as a bit of a backstop. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's, oh, PI is one of those uh, mazes that no one understands and, and, you know, how that crosses over with our PI and your PI. Mm. And uh, I think from an advisor, it wouldn't be, um, you'd need to do a lot of due diligence on your PI to kind of trust that that's okay. Um, sure. I guess that the whole, the whole platform is built around trust. So advisors need to trust that if I'm giving general advice, the that Nod is managing that process, that the client has fully opted into general advice. They understand the difference between general advice and personal advice. Um, and so I guess for you you guys, your job is really just about educating um, consumers, educating the advisors, um, and also, I don't know, maybe, maybe advisors um, need to get that signed off by licensees. Are, are you experiencing that with your advisors on the platform? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we, we have a, you know, most of our advisors are tend to be kind of from smaller dealer groups and uh, independent kind of firms um, just because, you know, can you, you can imagine how long it would take to a big bank to get their, to get their advisory group uh, on board with this at, at this stage. So um, we tend to deal with kind of more nimble firms and more nimble dealer groups. Um, so that's, uh, that's absolutely true. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend checking with your dealer group before um, advising or not just to make sure they, they're cool with it. Yeah, my, my process, just to give a bit of insight um, in, in doing a bit of due, due diligence, was, was flicking it through to our, um, uh, our, our um, licensee regulator or compliance officer, if you like. And um, ultimately, I think, it, I think it comes back to the clarity as to whether or not you're operating under um, 
general advice or personal advice. But but if, if you can put things in place like people opting into general advice and you're talking in roundabout terms and you know you're you're not you're not you're not talking in a way that's directive rather just these are things that you might consider. I think you know there, there's perhaps an element of discretion there which would suggest um, you know if it's something that you're interested in doing then 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 this is a way that you can do it. Yeah. Not not too dissimilar to a, 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 a random phone call, really. You know, if someone calls you and says, "Hey, I'm thinking about buying a house," you know, they, they're going to want you to demonstrate that you you are thinking about things that are valuable without, you know, giving giving advice. Yeah, I mean, Joel, it's it's literally one of the greatest areas of our whole industry, and you guys have jumped all in on it, and you're building your whole business around this grey area between general and personal advice. Um, yeah. So, well done, mate. Um, I love it. I love it. It's also dividing the the traditional uh, uh, normal advice versus uh, robo advice. You're kind of where I think the reality is is somewhere in between, right? It's hundred like, well, yeah. <laughs> percent. Um, you know, you're not. You're not. I I would challenge the idea of someone. You know, with with uh, uh, making life changing decisions would would be happy to do that through through a, a computer. Um, you know, majority yeah. of the time, but you know, I would make heaps of decisions, and I don't necessarily need someone. Like, I, I got my private health insurance sorted out last night after my accountant smacked me on the bum, and I didn't speak <laughs> to anyone about it because I didn't need to. I, you know, just work out the themes and away you go. Yeah, you know, our, our whole business is based on the hypothesis that people still want a human involved in these sorts of conversations, and um, you know, we think Robo has its place as well, but we think fundamentally there's a there's a massive and will always be uh, a place for um for human beings in these sorts of interactions because it's really hard to code for empathy um mm. and that's what we think advice yeah. bring to the table is the ability to understand a human being's situation um and not just see them as a kind of asset on a spreadsheet yeah right. most certainly yeah and I mean, yeah, I was saying it's kind of the biggest gray area of our industry, but that kind of leads to it's the biggest need for our industry. Like that is the biggest pain point. The fact that people can't just sit with an advisor who is an expert and ask a simple question and get a simple answer. Um, that's the biggest kind of pain point. And just to kind of go into more the technical side of everything with Benjamin Martian's asked question, um, is the obligation on the financial expert uh, to make sure they're meeting their obligations uh, in regards to licensing? Uh, we've kind of answered that. That's a yes. Um, but, he, but he did ask, with your... Um, because you have mortgage brokers, accountants and financial planners and, you know, if someone's asking about debt, are you making it clear that the person speaking to the end user is a mortgage broker um, and, and therefore, I guess, making it clear what they can discuss? And all Absol their absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So the user gets a full profile of the advisor. So um, who they are, what their job title is, um, a bit of a blurb about them and their skills and, and what sort of things they can, they can address and what sort of things they can't um, company logo, ABN, AFSL, all that stuff is, is in the advisor profile, um, which you'll see when I, I, when I take you off the waiting list, Phil. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so, so the, the, the client is, is 100% informed who's giving the advice, where they're from, um, what are their licensing conditions and what they can and can't advise on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, we've, we've made it really, really comprehensive. Yeah, and cool. just just another question Benjamin's asked, and, I, and I'm kind of um, asking these tricky questions because I think the more clarity we can give to the advice community about the Definitely. platform, the better it is. Um, just around the PI uh, insurance, uh, are you guys registered with FOSS or uh, uh, EDR, External Dispute Resolution uh, Scheme, uh, or does this come through uh, from the licensee? So, right. Um, so we're not registered with either of those schemes. We have actually taken out our own tailored um, insurance uh, a scheme, I suppose, uh, which has been put together by the same company that did Air, air Taskers. So yeah, um, okay, yeah. So we go down that road. My sense, my sense is Benjamin talking out of turn. My sense is uh, Nod are a platform, but ultimately, because you're you as the advisor engaging with the client just via a different platform, um, it's 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 really on you and your your licensee and your compliance team to make sure that you're Absolutely. you're operating within within that framework because it will be you. 
that is asked uh, to, to answer the question if, if the question is asked. Yeah, and that's a really important point. So when we when advice is given on the platform, the advice is not given from Nod. The advice yeah. is given from the advisor. That's really, really clear. We make that really clear to the, the client as well. Um, we're a platform that helps connect two people and provide some enabling technology to allow that interaction to happen really efficiently. But the advice is being given from the advisor, not from Nod. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think, I think that insurance policy is, is I mean... If I, if I was speaking for you, 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 you've got that just to give your consumers more confidence. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's just, it's just about building trust. That you're yeah. talking to has got a, you know, PI themselves and, you know, we cross yeah. our fingers that you'll be fine. Um, yeah. That's really for your consumers. 100%. It's, it's just about building trust and, and trying to break down some of those barriers to interacting online um, as you get with other, other kind of big platforms out there when they were first starting out. So. And, and Nigel's um, asked, have you had any um, client advisor disputes yet? Um, and if so, no. how have you dealt with it? Not, not one. Not one. Okay. Well, well a follow-on question. How, what, are you, what are your processes to, to deal with a dispute? Um, let's say yep. I'm a consumer. I've got an SOA, so, so a statement of advice from the, from the advisor. Um, but it kind of wasn't really what I wanted, not what I expected. Uh, I didn't really want to pay that fee. Um, you, you guys have charged me for it. Um, what kind of process do you guys have? Yeah, so we, so basically it's, it's pretty simple. So the client will register and say that there's a, they've got an issue with the advice that was given. We'll do a bit of a re review of it, um, kind of match it against the, the client's feedback. Um, if, um, and then kind of take that feedback back to the advisor, um, see if there's a way to augment the, the SOA or whatever advice was given so that, so that it actually answers whatever missing pieces or whatever questions there were. Um, and then hopefully that addresses the problem. Um, if not, then um, I, I would I would struggle to see where the where there be a situation where they wouldn't address it. But if if there really is a, an impasse, then then Nod will normally step in to just make sure both sides are happy. Mm -hmm. And 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 also Nod understanding how uh, the the uh, the advisors um, complaints um, you know external dispute resolution scheme that they that we are licensed under or we we hold. Um, and kind of maybe potentially referring the clients off to that um, if it's really something you can't solve. Um, yeah, absolutely. So again, the relationship is between the client and the advisor. Yeah. Um, if we can't solve it, then we will we'll refer to, to, to kind of external parties like that for sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, maybe, may, oh, good no, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's the cleanest way to think about it. It's, it's the relationship between you you and the client or the advisor and the client and there's a platform there that allows you to do it in a, in a clean and scalable way. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of how it's, how it's sat in my head. Um, moving, moving on from compliance, so, um, you know, are, are there examples you have of advisors using Nod really, really well? Like, how, 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 how are they going about it? Yeah, um, so I think the... The biggest thing that a client loves out of out of Nod is just that that really fast responsiveness. So um, our our average response time on general advice at the moment is down at around six to eight hours for a, a client getting an answer. Um, so you know that's 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 pretty quick compared to what the average time is. You know if you're going in and booking face to face meetings, that can take anywhere between four to six weeks, right? So. Um, we, um, the, the best advisors give great advice. They answer the question really directly, uh, but they also do it quickly. Um, that those would be the two things that I would say are the kind of client, uh, get the best response from clients. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and is that, is that in financial advice or uh, mortgage broking? Is there a particular uh, capacity that you're seeing, um, uh, doing this really well? Um, it's, I, I would say, um, most of those questions um, would be around kind of more financial advisory stuff. So here's my situation um, or here's my topic of concern. Can, can someone give me a, a kind of quick answer as to which, which, how I should be thinking about this or what are the things I should be considering? Cool. And, and Ray, we've got an audience question for you, mate. Uh, we don't normally get this for the people interviewing. Um, you're on Nod. Uh, you, yep. you obviously jumped in front of me. I don't know how that happened. Um, uh, have you, have you answered any questions just yet? 
I haven't. No, um, not not by virtue of anything other than poor timing. So I jumped uh, on the platform, Glenn, probably after Easter, um, and I um, I did my due diligence with our compliance, and um, you know I, I explained earlier what that experience was like. So there's no no inherent concerns with the structure or the platform that Nod provide. Um, I haven't used it by virtue of the fact that I was between Easter and end of financial year, which is probably a bad answer. Um, but thanks to our um, our federal government, I've been running around making sure pensions are under 1.7 or 1.6, and you know NCCs and all that. But I, I'm keen on looking at it. Um, you know, our, us personally, I, I, I won't won't shy away from the fact that we've got an older client base, probably 60, 65 years old, self funded retiree or pre retiree. Um, we are really, really putting a lot of effort to helping the 40-somethings, getting better at, at you know, the ones that want to talk to us via digital, how we do that scalably, via technology. And for me, not is something that we absolutely need to be considering in terms of um, you know, how, how that works. And it's, it goes to that comment earlier that I made about it being perhaps a way to get paid for Legion. If I can demonstrate value um, you know, through answering a, a, a nominal question for a nominal nominal fee you know in my mind I'm, I'm perhaps just responding to a website query but getting paid for it um you know that that's my initial thoughts but i i haven't i haven't used it yet no yeah so um joel i've got a, a tough question for you how are you going to win in this space we had uh Nikhil on last year who did pro advisor his model wasn't a marketplace his was more lead gen for advisors yep. Um, and he went into a lot of detail. Uh, if anyone listening, go back to the podcast or watch the video on that because um, he gave us a lot of details on. He just said it was really difficult. Uh, the cost of a lead um, uh, and to convert that into, um, you know, charging on charging the advisors was really expensive. So how are you guys going to win? There's, there's a few in this space. So how are you going to do it? Yeah, so I think... Um I think where we differ from a few uh, of these um, of these kind of uh, different platforms that are out there, I think, is the the fact that it's it's a genuine two sided marketplace. So we're not just kind of passing through leads to um, you know down 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 the funnel and kind of never seeing them again. We're trying to create a two sided marketplace, completely technology enabled to allow interactions to happen between two people, very much on platform. And what that creates is network effects. So where the more advisors we have on the platform, the more value there is for consumers. The more consumers there are on the platform, the more there are for advisors. So um, what we have to do is to create a really good technology piece in the middle to, uh, to enable that value to be kind of extracted from both sides. Um, so two things, that network effect is going to be really, really important. It's kind of a bit of a different take on this, on this space from then what's come before. Um, but also that, that enabling technology is really important to that. So um, there's plenty of fact find tools out there. There's plenty of personal financial management tools out there. Um, we don't think that advisors should have to pay for those. Um, we think you should be able to use those for free on a platform like not. Um, so uh, I think it's, it's just a different business model, which we're, we're excited about. Mm. And I, I guess the, the just circling back around to that trust, um, just the same as Airbnb, you're sleeping in someone's house, then they can murder you at night and <laughs> someone's car like an Uber. There was this massive fear around, well, yeah. you don't know the people, but like having a marketplace and a network where, you know, there's ratings, um, you know, is makes that job easy for the consumer because at the moment, what do they do? They just Google it. And they might look at your websites and they don't know if that advisor is dodgy or um, yeah. you know, really what, what they get from it. But having a, you know, a platform like that where you can interact with the advisor through the platform, but also, um, you know, the cream will rise to the crop through that platform as well. Um, makes it yeah. easier, builds that trust. Absolutely. So if you, if you think about Uber and Airbnb, it's a really good way to describe it. Um, you know, you wouldn't get in a strange, you wouldn't get, just get in a stranger's car, even now off the street, you wouldn't just get in a stranger's car. But for some reason, because you booked it through a particular app on your phone, you think it's okay. Um, so what that, what that, what that talks to is, is just trust in a platform and trust in a brand. Um, and we're going to have to go through that same journey of, of building that. Hmm. Yeah. Cool, mate. That's, that's wonderful. I will allow a couple more minutes just to round us out. So if there are, 
um, any questions from the, the uh, Facebook Live, please do so. Um, there was a question that I missed at the beginning, a um, little bit off topic, but still kind of cool. I'm sure heaps of guys are interested in this. Um, what's it like developing something out of an accelerator? Uh, I, I, so I would recommend the H2 accelerator to anyone. Um, I can't speak for some of the others. Uh, I have heard, you know, that it, there can be a mixed, mixed experience depending on what kind of accelerator you're in. Um, for us, it made a whole lot of sense. Um, a, because we needed the, the capital to quit our day jobs. Um, but B, um, we really valued uh, the mentorship we get uh, from uh, Ben and Toby Heat from H2 and the kind of mentors they bring uh, to the table um, f with us as well. Um, we've, um, we've just started to raise our next round of, round of funding as well. Uh, and one of the mentors that, that Toby and uh, Ben brought to the table is, was, the, was the first investor into that round. So um, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of benefits to being in an accelerator program uh, for, 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 for people like us. It made a whole lot of sense. For others, you won't need it. Um, it just depends on your, your specific situation. But I'd recommend H2X Accelerator to anyone. I do love the idea of um, being in an environment where you're, you're, learning, you're learning yesterday's lessons without needing to be there yesterday. Yeah, 100%. We, we, we learn more from um, kind of the founders who've just finished the Accelerator program than anyone else, uh, to be honest, uh, because they've, they've just gone through what we're, what we're going through. And, uh, and so H2, do they have any external investors, like uh, any of the big banks or anything that you can potentially leverage off? Uh, yeah, so um, I, I haven't checked their latest investor list, but I, I'm pretty sure they got some investment from some of the super funds at one stage in the in the current fund that's that's now open. So, um, and uh, Invest Tech is a big investor in uh, in H two as well, big corporate partner of theirs. And is it do within the accelerator? Is there any way to leverage off those relationships? Is that definitely. Is that not yeah, yeah. So we, we, we've met the Investec guys. We've been in, introduced to a few of the, the funds, the banks. Um, we've met uh, and spent a lot of time with both um, Reinventure, uh, Westpac's in, uh, venture capital arm, and NAB Ventures. So yes, absolutely. We're um, it's part of part of the deal with accelerator programs. Is there's a lot of connections there that you can you can open some doors without maybe having to work quite so quite as hard for it as you would if you were just coming off the street. And um, last question from me, how much money are you raising and how much is your company worth? <laughs> um, I, I won't tell you how much it's worth, but um, we, are, we are looking to raise about half a million dollars. So it's a, it's a true seed round. Awesome. You have to uh, sign the NDS, Phil, and put yourself money fund under it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Joel. Hey, man, really appreciate it. I, I did forget to mention Joel's been... Uh, uh, in Europe up until uh, sort of first thing this morning. So uh, he's probably in the middle of the night in his brain, but he's uh, been yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really wonderful. I appreciate it. It's a, it's a fascinating space, man. It's, it's totally outside the box in terms of, you know, what what you would walk into the industry delivering to people. So I commend you for that. It's it's a pretty brave and, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great endeavor. So well done to you, mate. Oh, thank you very much. And I really appreciate uh, you guys making the time to have me on. Um, hopefully I've made some sense. Um, and uh, just a really quick plug, if you want to check it out and, and uh, become an advisor on the platform, the, the URL is, is www.nod.money. So I'd love to see a few of the advisors out there come on here because we, um, we love the XY live community. Um, it's uh, the kind of advisors we're, we're looking to, to have on the platform. So really encourage you to check it out. Awesome. Thanks, Joel. And I expect to be accepted uh, sometime later. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, mate. Okay. Uh, Thanks, see guys. What I can do. See you guys. Bye.